Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rajesh, for such nice, kind words. And I would like to thank Dr. Banshi Sabu, sir, Dr. Bharat, Dr. Suryam Jain, sir, Dr. Manoj Chawla, sir, for inviting me. And today, although given me a task to like talk on interstitial fluid glucose, uh, although I couldn't find much of the slides, I've, I've, I've been more on a theoretical, uh, the slides I've made it. So let us. Uh, Can you This is a good So <coughs> The treatment of uh, diabetes uh, in recent years has undergone drastic changes, drastic improvements are the say over, over the last decades, uh, which was which is actually driven by the introduction of poor diagnostic options, therapeutic options, and this has made uh, a job easier for the physician uh, uh, to treat diabetes and its complications. And if I talk about the, the most important aspect, that is the diagnostic uh, uh, criteria, uh, today patients with diabetes actually not only can measure uh, blood glucose relatively easily, uh, but, but they can also monitor changes in the glucose levels in their body continuously by using uh, a system which is continuous glucose monitoring. Although I, I, I had not been a very big fan of CGM because I had uh, used CGM very uh, off lately. But, uh, but after uh, reading and after studying, after researching, and uh, now I, I think CGM is actually the, the best option today. The evolution of diabetes technology, um, we know the evolution way uh, back since, uh, since last 100 years, and today what we have, uh, the, the, the therapeutic options, the diagnostic options. But most importantly, what I would like to uh, highlight is actually the, the diagnostic uh, ideas or the procedures which we have uh, with us right now. First would be self-monitoring of blood glucose, second HbA1c, which is uh, actually uh, uh, the thing which everyone knows. Then thirdly, CGMS and future technology. Now for, for the decades, the major source of information actually used uh, to make a therapeutic decision to treat a patient with diabetes has been the glucose measurement. And we actually had been using the, the glucometer, the simple gl glucometer, which, which, was, which, which we used to measure the capillary blood glucose. But in recent times, uh, the different, uh, actually to traditional blood glucose uh, systems, the system of continuous glucose monitoring uh, has, has actually been introduced into the market. And what is important is the continuous glucose monitoring does actually measure the interstitial fluid glucose. And the assumption is that glucose, I'll, I'll talk, I'll uh, explain to you later why uh, interstitial fluid glucose is, could actually be compared to the capillary blood glucose. But the assumption is that glucose levels in the blood and ICF are practically the same and that the information provided can be used interchangeably. Although there are some controversies, the, the lack of studies, although about the, the, the benefits of measuring uh, interstitial fluid glucose. Now, interstitial fluid glucose, uh, what, is, what is actually, the, what I'll, I'll be very quick in, in uh, explaining what is interstitial fluid glucose. Actually, it is a three layer of fluid which surrounds the body cells. What happens is uh, the blood glucose does, uh, 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 actually what happens, uh, the, the whole blood glucose gets uh, transported to the interstitial fluid and this actually, uh, these, the, the glucose in the interstitial fluid gets transported to the cells to gain energy. And we'll uh, see, uh, in, interstitial is very rarely mentioned in everyday conversation, but it plays an important role in our body and makes almost 40% of the water, water in our body. It does contain glucose, the minerals, the, the other salts and everything. But what we are concerned right now is the, are the blood glucose levels. And the diagnostic utility of ISF has been increasingly explored with, with, with the studies. But still, uh, till date, what I have studied, the data are uh, more or less very much in favor of using uh, the continuous glucose monitoring and measuring, measurement of the interstitial fluid glucose. Uh, 
also continuous glucose meters uh, rely on uh, 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 interstitial fluid are similarly accurate even uh, when not requiring blood based calibration to fingerprint glucose meter what happened um, uh, uh, the thing is that uh, we actually previously thought that uh, the capillary blood glucose measurement was uh, the difference between the capillary blood glucose and then this interstitial fluid glucose was much more higher but uh, after the studies, after the researches, after the, the, the real world evidences, uh, we could say that the, uh, the ISF fluid glucose or the, the measurement of the continuous glucose monitoring does not require any calibration and it could actually be uh, 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 compared with the whole blood glucose. The studies were there, lots of studies are there. Uh, the Lonoth et al. was the first to use this method to show that interstitial fluid glucose was almost identical to venous plasma glucose in healthy individuals during study state. Janssen et al. demonstrated an increase in lag time between ISF and plasma, but th this lag time was almost uh, uh, non-comparable, almost 10% of the lag time was seen in, the, in these studies. And the data of Janssen et al. revealed lower interstitial fluid glucose levels than plasma glucose during the clamp experiment extracting EF, IF by suction blister technique. Now, there, is a, there are certainly lag times uh, if we compare the whole blood glucose to the interstitial fluid glucose, but this lag time is very uh, confined to the sudden changes in the, uh, the, the meal pattern, whatever. Because basically what we uh, uh, do is we actually have uh, a higher carbohydrate meal if we talk about the Indian uh, Asian pattern. So these uh, sudden changes in the blood glucose level does gives us some differences in the values of uh, whole blood glucose as compared to the interstitial fluid glucose. But that is also confined to a very short period of time. But if we look into the study state, we can clearly say that uh, IF uh, interstitial fluid glucose measurements are almost identical to the whole blood glucose. And uh, in general, uh, interstitial fluid and plasma glucose variations were evaluated in two different conditions. See, uh, how we can say that interstitial fluid glucose uh, is uh, or could be compared to the whole blood glucose? One, we can say, okay, let us measure uh, both the values in a steady state and then let us measure both the glucose levels in a non-steady state. Now, under the study state conditions, interstitial fluid glucose generally correlated with the blood glucose with the lag time reported to be between 0 to 45 minutes. Now, what happens when we actually use CGMS, there, there are certainly lag times in the, uh, 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 in the blood glucose reporting. And this lag time in the study state when a person is not exercising or not taking a heavy meal is uh, varying between 0 to 45 minutes. Uh, and but on an average, uh, the lag of uh, the lag time of around eight to ten minutes are there. In uh, the difference is there between whole blood glucose and the uh, CGMS values. And if we uh, think about the non-steady state, or or we can say that uh, a push-pull phenomenon can also be uh, can also explain the difference. Uh, look at look at this picture. This would clearly uh, uh, explain the thing. Uh, see. What happens is, whenever you uh, have a meal, the blood glucose enters through the intestinal uh, uh, the walls and then it goes to the uh, whole blood and then it goes to the interstitial fluid. And what happens is, your blood glucose meter measures glucose levels in your blood, that is the whole blood. And the glucose central measures glucose in the fluid surrounding your cells, that is the difference. And glucose travels between these two areas, uh, uh, between where? between the blood glucose and the sensor glucose. Why I am saying sensor glucose? Because we are measuring it through the continuous glucose monitoring system. So what happens? So your blood glucose or, or BG meter readings and sensor glucose meetings, let, let's say a, a BG and SG will be close, but will rarely match exactly. And this difference is normal and should be expected. Although we can say that uh, it can be controversial, but still, but still in a steady state, in a steady state, they can be compared uh, uh, the both values could be compared. But what happens whenever we take a heavy meal or exercise, what happens is the lag time or, or the difference between the blood, whole blood glucose levels and the uh, uh, sensor glucose levels varies a time. And this, this actually uh, 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 is, uh, the, the difference is quite substantial. Uh, so th in this way, we can say, okay, PGMS are good, Continuous glucose monitoring systems are very good, but whenever there are certain lag times are there, varying between 10 to 15 minutes, 
So whenever a patient or a person is experiencing the symptoms of hyperglycemia or more uh, importantly the symptoms of hypoglycemia, then certainly those patients should actually measure their blood uh, glucose, the whole blood glucose through a glucometer because of these lag times. What happens is in, in, a, in, in a CGMS, the values which is showing right now actually shows you the, uh, the values of uh, which actually had been the, uh, 10 or 15 minutes back. But still, but still, uh, amongst all the controversies, we can still say that interstitial fluid glucose is almost always comparable with the blood glucose levels. But the basic difference in SMBG self-monitoring blood glucose, uh, self-monitoring of blood glucose, why? Uh, it is actually very easy, but it is also a troublesome thing because Whenever uh, there, uh, there, is, uh, 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 there are glycemic variabilities, we tend to be very anxious and what we do is, we always monitor uh, our blood glucose through, uh, through the glucometers, be it 10 times, 15 times or 20 times a day and this becomes troublesome for a patient. And, and, and if you look at the CGMS, value, uh, the, the, the sensors what we put it in, in the interstitial fluid or, or the uh, subcutaneous tissues, what happens is, uh, the, the level of anxiety almost always is not there among the patients. So, SMBG what we use, the fluid test is blood, in the traditional uh, CGM interstitial fluid and the flash CGM we use the interstitial fluid also. Calibration required in SMBG no, but in traditional CGM uh, it is required twice daily, but the latest uh, Libre Pro sensors or the Digem G6 sensors, uh, no calibration actually is required, uh, the latest one. Now the maximum duration of sensors used per day. The traditional CM we were using it for seven days, but the newer flash CGM we use it for 14 days. But what happens is uh, th there are also key differences among the CGMs, uh, continuous glucose monitoring systems also. I'll be very quick. Uh, I'll not talk about the, 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 the blood glucose meter, what we use it. But more importantly, uh, we will talk about the continuous glucose monitoring system. Now test glucose in the interstitial fluid every few minutes for up to 7 days. But newer formulations, the newer techniques, we use it for 14 days. Alarm system warns if glucose rapidly changes, <coughs> but this, <coughs> glucose, this rapid glucose change uh, does not show the real time values. There are some lag times, that is the reason why we always say do actually monitor blood glucose levels with a glucometer if you experience any symptoms of hypoglycemia more importantly because hypoglycemia is actually not troublesome but hypoglycemia are more or less very troublesome. Now if we compare it CGM with blood glucose meter, CGM reads glucose levels from the interstitial fluid certainly, blood glucose meters read glucose levels from the blood, usually within 20% of each other unless the blood sugar levels are rapidly rising or falling, the values could be or, or are comparable. What I have already explained to you. Rapidly rising or falling when after a, a, a meal, heavy carbohydrate meal or exercise, then that's certainly the, the difference is there among the values of uh, CGMS and the whole blood glucose values. And uh, if the glucose alerts and readings from the CGM do not match symptoms of expectation, use a blood glucose meter to make diabetes treatment decisions. But CGMS has made our task very easier. Because right now the newer CGMS uh, machines have come and, and, and what, ha what is happening is in, in the reader itself there are certain, uh, the alarms are there which actually raises the, uh, uh, the, the alarm actually uh, rings and it tells you the, the, that the patient you are actually feeling hypoglycemic and what is important is that this reader actually is with the patient not uh, because previously what we, uh, we were doing is we were doing the retrospective data analyzing uh, with the CGM. Uh, the conventional CGM, but in the newer uh, uh, modulations or the newer CGM machines, uh, the patient actually could own the CGM machine and they could actually uh, look at the variations, uh, the glu blood glucose variations, day-to-day uh, -day variations, and they can actually adjust their insulin levels or uh, according to, and that is the reason why CGMS are very much helpful in, in type 1 diabetic patients or a child who are actually uh, very susceptible for, a, for hypoglycemic events. So CGMS gives you a fuller picture, certainly, uh, every few minutes, 24 hours a day, plots data on a trend graph, graph and uh, trend arrow shows where your glucose is headed and how it is changing uh, and can set high and low glucose alerts so you know if glucose is headed out of range. But still, lag times are there. So I would uh, suggest that uh, because of this lag time, once any patient feels uh, the symptoms of hypoglycemia, they should certainly go for the blood glucose meter checked.
and uh, certainly what is there the 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 cgm is a small wearable device actually which is inserted under the skin and measures glucose levels in the subcutaneous fluid or we can say interstitial fluid and it is connected to a transmitter that sends the data to a monitoring and display device what happens is hum, we actually uh, fix the, uh, this tiny sensor uh, uh, into the subcutaneous tissue and then we take a reader and then uh, we actually uh, uh, call the patient after 7 days or after 14 days and then we measure the blood glucose variation that is the reason why i said that this is a retrospective a data collection rather than the real time but today we also have cgms uh, or the uh, the continuous glucose monitoring machines where we can uh, measure the real time glucose also so the benefits of cgms increase security from alarms and alerts certainly the newer uh, uh, the machines immediate feedback uh, the the 8g trend provides more information than static readings and control is there plus safety is there and safety is most importantly the safety with the 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 events of hypoglycemic uh, complications now there are certainly some limitations of cgms one is interference with glucose readings by sensor can occur with certain substances certainly if if uh, uh, some of the patients are using glutathione or ascorbic acid or uric acid or have a high hyperuricemia or even using uh, the, the 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 medicines for uric acid or even salicylates then the interference with cgms could actually uh b uh, 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 the the readings would actually substantially change uh, as per the real readings the lag time for up to 15 minutes certainly is there when glucose changes rapidly that is the reason i have always told just use the the, uh, the 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 conventional glucose meter and then overall percentage of error certainly nearly 15% with the guardian real time 17% dexcom is it is varying between 8, 11 to 16% and then navigator 12 to 14% but variably <laughs> the mean uh, uh, the, the mean percentage of error is varying between 10 to 15%. There are certain sites wearing the CGM. I'll not go with the, the, the site things. Then we have the readers, CGM device readers, then certainly Dexcom G6 uh, sensors, then Metronis Guardian Connect, <coughs> certainly Freestyle Libre. Now we have Freestyle Libre Pro also. Uh, uh, we can do the real time uh, glucose monitoring also. Uh, but more or less, we as a physician are doing the retrospective uh, data collection. But uh, uh, once a patient buys these uh, machines or the sensors, they can actually uh, take the real-time uh, glucose readings and they can actually adjust their dosage of insulin uh, according to their blood sugar levels. Calibrations. Use the same meter. Use clean hands certainly. What you don't want to do with the sensors. Uh, if you take, uh, see, Dexom G5 user there, I will not go with this. Uh, certainly do not do calibrations if blood glucose levels are changing rapidly and if blood glucose levels are less than 40 or more than 400. Uh, some educational tips, look at trends over several days before making adjustments, avoid reacting to the number, see if the pattern develops, blood sugar levels will rise after a meal but as long as the value comes back to the target range by the next meal, no intervention is needed, that is more important. Ketone checks only necessary when sugar is more than 300 for more than 2-3 hours on a trend graph and call the CGM company, whatever company you buy, call the CGM company, they have the toll free number for technical concerns and if sensors are not lasting the entire 7-10 to 10 day cycle, more or less 7-14 to 14 day cycle. There are certainly some emerging researches, okay, uh, uh, just, just 30 seconds, injectable continuous osmotic glucose sensors are there, the tier sensors are there, uh, uh, are in the market, uh, uh, the, the, they are actually providing a very highly um, future generating generation sensors. So to summarize, home blood glucose meters measure the glucose in whole blood, while most lab tests measure the glucose in the plasma. Plasma glucose levels are generally 10 to 50 percent higher than the glucose measurements in whole blood, but most of the modern meters on the market actually gives uh, results as a plasma equivalent. But if you are uh, monitoring the glucose levels uh, subcutaneously or interstitial fluid, then certainly uh, it is the best way or the, uh, the, the, current, the, the current best way to approach uh, the variations in, or the uh, variations of blood sugar levels or higher glycemic variability. And in near future, non-invasive glucose monitoring via implanted non-sensor will be available so certainly and this would help more or less. Thank you.